you doing? My name is Steve Dyer. I'm the owner and president of BRT Motorsports and Performance Race Team. I'm here today with our crew chief, Aaron Brown, uh, to tell us a little bit about this project he has going on behind us, uh, the Brat Rod Land Speed Project, I think is what we call it. Yes, sir. So I'll let him uh, go ahead and give us a little background on this. In 2007, a group of us went to the Bonneville Salt Flats to set a land speed record with a Dodge NASCAR Winston Cup car. That project was very successful and we hope to make a return with our 1939 Ford. And so we decided, a group of us, the same basic group got back together and we decided to uh, go back out and one of the new markets in the hot rod industry is the rat rod. And I believe that the rat rods are derived from guys in the 30s and 40s that built cars and vehicles in their garage for performance and they built them out of what they could get their hands on and they took them out there and did the best they could. So we decided to do the same thing. We built this truck right here in the shop. It's a 1939 Ford cab and bed with a full chassis underneath of it. It has a 358 Ford NASCAR engine with a CNR racing transmission, four speed sequential, the Dynatech drive shaft and a nine inch floater rear with a 389 gear. The Complete suspension package, everything was designed to go 200 plus miles an hour. The world's fastest rat rod right now is 184. We're shooting for a goal of just over 200. I think we have a little bit more from the preliminary test, but uh, time will tell. AB, how about you tell us a little bit more about some of your time at the uh, Salt Flats and the uh, projects you've had out there? It's a, it's, a, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. Uh, in 1998 through 93 through 98, when I was working on the Winston Cup teams here in North Carolina, I lived beside Bobby Isaac's sister. He was the 1970 Winston Cup champion. Uh, drove the wing warrior cars, the uh, Dodges, and she passed away in 1998. She always prided herself on what Bobby did at the Salt Flats, and he held that record for over 30 years. In 2006, that record fell. In late 2007, I got the call from Dodge to go back to the Salt Flats and bring that record home for Dodge, and it meant a lot to me because of the family ties I had with the Isaac family, and they still have a lot of roots here in Catawba County. So we built a car in three weeks. The existing record was 216 miles an hour, which Bobby set. The record that fell in 2006 was two, 226 miles an hour. And our final record both ways was 244.9 miles an hour, which it still stands today. That was probably one of the greatest racing accomplishments, the most fulfilling to me ever in my life, just to be there and be on hollowed ground with Craig Breedlove and Bobby Isaac and, and, and guys like that that really put their heart and soul and passion into just one thing and that was flat out speed. Why don't you tell us some of the passion that went into building this salt flat vehicle that you have behind us today? Well over the last few years we've been involved in the rat rod market and the hot rods and, and things like that and also racing. And after the salt flats, we accomplished that and the record still stands today, we decided we want to do something a little different. And we've gone to quite a few shows and seen a lot of what rat routing has to offer. And I felt I wanted to do something outside the box that more emulated what they did in the 40s, which they were concerned about performance and looks weren't that important, but it all flowed together. and. A group of us came together, Goodwin Restorations, Terry Sigma, um, CNR Radiators, Goodrich, and we all sat down and talked about it and came up with this idea that we'll build basically a tribute to all the men and women that came before us with very little or nothing to go as fast as they could at Bonneville. And that's where we came up with, you know, a 39 Ford truck. I'm a truck fan, so it had to be a truck. But uh, that's where we kind of came up with this. And it's street legal, and you, you can drive it on the road, and it's hopefully going to be the world's fastest rat rod. So the first time you, you, you did this record was with a, a cup car, and now we're coming back, and this is the way I understand it, a new class uh, for rat rods. Is, is that it, is, right? it is a new class. Uh, I've, I've spoke with Mike Cook. He said he would make it a class because there is interest out there in what's going on. The, they have so many classes out there that it's, it's very difficult 
it would have been difficult to build our vision of a salt flat truck and fit it into one of their classes. So Mike Cook was kind enough to uh, say, hey, there is a lot of interest here, so we're gonna make you guys a class and uh, turn you loose. Now, what are you anticipating this, uh, this kind of a vehicle is, is, is gonna do, you know, mile, mile per hour wise? Preliminary test with this, uh, first gear was 60 miles an hour, second gear was 115 miles an hour uh, at well under the RPMs where it makes its big power. And that was, you know, we're, we're going to sort some things out and creep into it slowly. But, I mean, I look to see definitely over 200 from what I've seen so far. I, I think it's capable. <laughs> That's for sure. And as you know, we went for a ride today. I think and, it's capable uh, on that for sure. Yeah. And it handles great. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the suspension and stuff that you have in the rear and how, it, how it, you got it to that point to handle as well as it does. Be, uh, through my experience in racing, I used a lot of that knowledge and leaned on a lot of good people for, you know, some help and, you know, some ideas. And, and it's a group effort, the whole truck was. Um, but we ended up using a truck arm rear suspension with coilovers, Penske adjustable shocks. It's basically the same rear suspension that you would see in a cup car on Sunday afternoon. This week at Dover. <laughs> um, also, the front suspension was a little harder because, as you know, the cup car has independent front suspension. This is a solid axle front suspension and with, with, tra with trailing arms. So we designed basically that entire front suspension. The shocks are laid down underneath the frame rail. They're Penske shocks. They work off bell cranks. Uh, we worked hard on the suspension settings, did some simulation with it uh, on some computer programs, the same programs that they use in Winston Cup racing. And we're pretty, so far, we're pretty happy with what we have. We haven't really turned it totally loose yet, but it's, it's looking good. I mean, real happy. We hadn't, it hasn't reared its head yet. <laughs> I'm sure. And it was a little damp today, so it could have. Yeah. Uh, if you could, why don't you tell us about some of the scheduled uh, races you're going to try and make in the upcoming uh, season. Hopefully, we had truck team racing. <laughs> <laughs> we had some very high hopes for this year, uh, but some of the racing that we do here full time kind of nixed a lot of that. And I didn't feel comfortable with rushing into going this year. And I, when I go, when we take the team out there, I want it to be right. I want to do it once and be done with it. I think that is an accomplishment in itself to just do it and, and have it be smooth. And so we're working towards that. And, and now that the truck is nearing completion, uh, we're starting to put a lot of logistics in place. There's some events in the spring in Texas called the Texas Mile. It's a standing mile and a half. I feel that we could reach our goal at 200 there. Uh, and that's the way it's geared and things right now is for that Texas mile. Uh, the salt flats, there'll be some major changes to the truck uh, to increase stability, aerodynamics, and uh, you know gear ratios. Um, but I feel on a 12 mile run, I, I really feel that 220 miles an hour is, it's a lofty goal, but I think it's possible. Now. That, that's interesting you bring, it up, bring up the changes because uh, even with a little bit damp, I mean, it, it tends to break free pretty quick. Um, is that an issue with the salt? It'll be a big issue with the salt. And a lot of the changes, it'll have a bed top on it. It'll have a wing on the back, parachutes. It'll have a small nose cone on the front. Uh, the cab will be sealed. The windows will be sealed. There'll be a lot of things. It'll have um, land speed racing tires on it. These are street tires. Uh, there'll be a lot of changes be made to the vehicle to safely achieve the kind of speeds we're looking for. Uh, wrapping it up, um, is there anybody in particular you'd like to uh, thank for this project or anyone uh, in particular who helped you with this? A lot, a lot of people. A lot of people have been involved. We started this project last December when we drove to Texas to actually just pick up the bare cabin and bed, that, the one that I selected to use for this project. and. Uh, my good friend Reggie Dash and my son Spencer rode with me to Texas. It was a 2,000 mile round trip, no stops. Had to get it done, get it back here so we get back to work on race cars. Uh, PRT Motorsports have uh, been with us the entire time. Uh, Todd Wiley is doing a really good job with the media. And we'd also like to thank Goodrich uh, Plumbing and Hoses. They've been a part of all my world record setting events. 
and they've, they're a big part of this one and have done an amazing job with all the plumbing and hoses. CNR radiators, Chris Paulson and Fuzzy, Jeff Horton, did an amazing job on the cooling system. The CR1 transmission, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the gears are all rem finished, axles, drive shafts, drive train, uh, they just, they, they knocked it right out. Good friend of mine, Terry Sigmund with the upholstery and also Goodwin Restorations uh, helped blend in some of the paint to get the patina correct on the truck, which is very difficult. I mean, one would think that's very easy. Oh, you can make it look not so good, but he spent a lot of time really getting the patina where we wanted and it's an ongoing job and he still works hard on getting that done for us and uh, doing those detail works with those brake hands and, you know, the uh, doing the paint work. He does great work, great work. And other than that, all the people that supported us, you know, and come over to the shop and helped. And uh, I'm really, I'm really happy with the group of people. They have, a, there's a lot of passion in this group for this project, and I enjoy that the, the most. Well, it's a really cool project, and uh, I had a blast riding in it today. <laughs> and I think we're all excited to see how it's going to perform at the Salt Flats and in Texas. So. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep.